Billiman is a global firm with 75 years of experience providing actuarial expertise to the insurance industry. We have a very simple mission, to serve our clients, to protect the health and financial well-being of people everywhere. It is exactly our commitment to protecting people everywhere that brings us to our session today. Today's session is on building actuarial expertise in developing countries and boosting sustainable development. In addition to discussing the issues and opportunities associated with building actuarial expertise in the developing world, we have very good news to share with you about the Global Actuarial Initiative. The United Nations Development Program and Milliman are working together on GAIN, the Global Actuarial Initiative, to take concrete action country by country to raise the level of actuarial capability. This involves training and mentoring aspiring actuaries, working with insurance regulators to plug in the actuarial skill set, and working with a full range of stakeholders, including domestic and global insurers, reinsurers, technology companies, universities, and others. The Global Actuarial Initiative is part of a key part, is a key part of a broad-based movement to empower people, families, and organizations throughout the developing world to better quantify and manage the risks that they face. To discuss these topics today, we are incredibly privileged to have Occam Steiner here with us. Occam is the administrator of the United Nations Development Program. Mr. Steiner became the leader of the UNDP in 2017, following his nomination by the UN Secretary General and his confirmation by the UN General Assembly. In addition to his leadership of the UNDP, Occam is also vice chair of the UN Sustainable Development Group. This effort unites entities across the UN system to support sustainable development. For three decades, Mr. Steiner has worked to advance sustainability, economic growth, and equality for the vulnerable. And I'm sure you are as excited as I am to hear directly from Occam about the connection between actuarial expertise and systems of risk financing with the broader goals of the United Nations Development Program. So Occam, thank you very much for being here today. Uh, before we get into the, the detailed back and forth discussion, you know, please add anything that you'd like to share as an introduction to the UNDP and your priorities as administrator of the organization. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ken, for both uh, these introductory words, um, the leadership that you have shown, because the fact that we are sitting here together and having an opportunity to address the international community of actuaries has a lot to do with your vision, your leadership. Um, you refer to my day job, which is to head the United Nations Development Program. Perhaps just a couple of words about this institution. It is the largest of the development organizations within the United Nations family, currently supporting development programs, policy reforms, projects in 170 countries. We have a staff of about 22,000 experts and colleagues who literally work from the front lines of some of the most difficult countries in which currently keeping the idea of development and hope alive may seem a stretch of the imagination. It could be Yemen, it could be Afghanistan, it could be Myanmar, Libya, the Sahel, Haiti. These are countries in which we are tested to the limits about how to help nations to emerge from very complex situations. But as a development program, we are really part of the UN's promise to invest in one another. The 2030 Agenda, the Sustainable Development Goals have given us, in a sense, the framework within which we, at the moment, are working across the globe principally often advising governments, but increasingly also drawing on partnerships such as the one that Miniman and UNDP have developed and that we will talk about in a moment. And certainly for us in the United Nations Development Program, the journey around uh, insurance and risk finance and actuarial science has really taken a major leap forward in recent years through the Insurance Development Forum, but also initiatives such as the one that we will talk about in a moment. So Ken, once again, a great privilege and pleasure to join you, and I hope we will have an exchange that will demonstrate the extraordinary potential of our two worlds, if I may put it in that way, coming together. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I and I hope I hope so as well. So let's let's jump into some specific questions. So uh, starting off, uh, developing economies are facing an unprecedented level of risk and uncertainty, 
Uh, we see this coming from the climate emergency, uh, the repercussions of COVID-19, the sovereign debt crisis, and the invasion of Ukraine. The impacts of these challenges are, comp are compounded by a lack of appropriate financial resilience instruments to manage these complex and intersecting risks. So in this context, and for the UNDP, how important is it that governments and communities understand how to better model their risks and to manage them? Well, you just alluded to it. We, we live in a moment in time that um, I think uncertainty very well captures um, both a collective sense amongst our societies, our communities about what is happening to us, a pandemic that none of us really believe would um, become a reality, although science fiction had often described such a scenario, put us as a global family into an extraordinary moment of crisis and setbacks. And UNDP, which regularly or annually publishes the UNDP Human Development Report, which looks at development progress for every country across the globe, for the first time in 30 years, had two successive years of that Global Human Development Index actually declining. And sadly, this is a phenomenon that did not only hit the most vulnerable countries, which obviously are also the least able to sometimes deal with risks, uncertainty and crisis, but actually also some of the wealthiest countries with its life expectancy, the increase in the number of poor people. And here we come straight to that complexity of dealing with risk. Um, risk is always in part of you know, the lives of human beings on this planet, but we live in an age where, as you alluded to, the confluence of climate change, of economic disruption, but also of conflicts and wars has put us into a situation where trying to understand how to deal with risks, be they through natural disasters, be they as a result of conflicts or indeed the global economic situation. Few people realize that right now, 51 countries across the globe are one step away from essentially defaulting, not being able to pay the interest rates on loans faced with the extraordinary impact that interest rate rises have caused inflation, driving up the cost of borrowing and literally rendering entire economies unable to finance the investments in development. But you can also zoom in right to a farming household or to somebody who lives next to a river and suddenly your entire existence, everything you have built up over a lifetime can just be destroyed. We have small island developing states in the Caribbean. Many of you follow every year the hurricane season 20-30% of GDP can be wiped out literally in a matter of hours. Trying to find ways in which we can de-risk this existential impact, because we cannot stop hurricanes right now, we can act on climate change and in the long term reduce the likelihood of these risks exponentially growing, but already hundreds of millions of people face them every year. Every week in the our evening news we can watch this. So our work began a few years ago in looking at not only how do we address climate change through mitigation, emission reductions? How do we also help communities and nations to address this de-risking of these um, very real threats to their, to their well-being, their survival? And this is where we began to introduce our insurance and risk finance facility. We began to discover the world of insurance as actually integral to de-risking the lives and, in a sense, the livelihoods of hundreds of millions of people. And into that came also the partnership that um, Ken, you and I then began to foster with our teams, where the work of actuarial science and um, of actuaries emerged as a fascinating possibility to help countries to, one, address the fact that in many developing countries, there is a very rudimentary capacity even in the country to apply some of the cutting edge thinking and methodologies that you as actuaries can bring to the pricing of risk, which in turn opens up enormous possibilities, for instance, to address climate risk insurance or to introduce new micro health insurance schemes where a different way of pricing can suddenly open the opportunity for poor people to actually have access to insurance. Many people don't realize that in our efforts to reduce poverty around the world, very often the majority of those who fall back into poverty do so as a result of crisis in terms of their family members falling ill. All the savings having to be spent, a setback sometimes for a generation. These are some of the frontiers we're trying to look at, helping countries to also develop not only the insurance regulatory environment, but also in a sense, finding new ways of 
making more inclusive insurance markets become a reality. These are just a few examples that led us, so to speak, into a partnership where the kind of work that you do in Milliman suddenly becomes an enormous asset. We as a development program working in 170 countries with you as a cutting edge company in this field can suddenly create for many developing countries the possibility of a major leap forward. That's wonderful. And it's you know, you outlined such such a challenging situation, but you you hit kind of the key point that I was hoping we could address today, which is the 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 is there a role for actuaries as risk management experts to play in addressing these challenges? And uh, I'm I'm delighted to see that we're that the actuarial community is on the radar screen of the UNDP. Uh, obviously, we, we want to help. We we feel that we can help, and uh, and I, I'm hearing for you that uh, that that is indeed the case. Any any other other comments you'd like to share just about the the role for actuaries generally uh, addressing these challenges? Well, as I alluded to, Ken, I think we often underestimate how unequal our world is today. I mean, you work um, out of a country that is, in a sense, at the pinnacle of having developed both uh, an insurance world and market, but also the science and practice that actuaries bring to this universe of, in a sense, de-risking. If you look at some countries in East Africa, there are sometimes no real regulatory frameworks that are in any way compatible with actually facilitating modern and more inclusive insurance markets. Even the availability of trained actuaries is sometimes a matter of in a country such as Ethiopia, of maybe you know 50, 60 trained and fully qualified actuaries being able to be uh, used in an, a market with a population of well over 100 million people. Um, there are countries such as Kenya uh, in the East African neighborhood have a much more developed system. There are institutions, there are training institutions. So we literally begin from the fact that there is no expertise in a country available to then building the capacity of government to create the regulatory frameworks, the training platforms on which that kind of expertise can be generated, and then really creating the capacity to work as a regulator, which is the core function of government, in trying to attract and enable new and more inclusive insurance markets to emerge, attracting insurance companies. And then we can go a step further. In a recent survey that we undertook uh, when it comes to rating agencies who also engage in the pricing, so to speak, that uh, particularly developing countries have to pay when they borrow on international capital markets. By one estimate, African countries could save $70 billion over the next decade if we could actually move that sometimes very subjective part also of assessing risk into a methodologically more rigorous and perhaps more accurate and really bespoke to individual countries assessment. So this is a very real way in which the cost of borrowing, the cost of capital, which is fundamental in development, can also benefit enormously from precisely the sort of capacity that you and I envisaged when we began the Global Actuaries Initiative. And we are now working already in a number of countries. And surprisingly, or perhaps we shouldn't be surprised, the demand is rocketing because in many countries, the minute you actually present the scope of what we're trying to help them address, it is self-evident that this is a win-win proposition. Wonderful. So at this point, I think um, I have the privilege to throw a few questions at you, or um, are we- Go are we right ahead. Um, Ken, given this wish list that I also just um, listed and, and that long range of possibilities from a global development sector perspective, how do you see and what led you also to, as a leader in Milliman, to see actuaries contribute to this? Because it wasn't necessarily the most obvious um, frontier on which Milliman could have engaged. So it would be very interesting to hear a little bit more about how you arrived at the decision to enter into a partnership that is, um, let's say, unusual by industry standards. Well, happy, happy to... Go, go through that. From from my perspective, when you when you think about what has to happen for developing countries to advance economically, all of the work that actuaries uh, do is is just critical to the functioning of their economy. By having, you must have a functioning risk management system uh, for uh, all of the work that the development community is trying to achieve. 
So if you think of having just effective data collection processes and then, and then managing and analyzing that data, actuaries play uh, such an important role. And then they advance from that step to use actuarial pricing techniques and judgment so that uh, inclusive insurance can actually be manufactured. You know, without that foundation, the uh, systems of inclusive insurance just simply aren't going to develop. And if we if we look at how risk management systems in the developing world have have developed without actuaries being present, uh, you find uh, really a massive level of conservatism in the prices that you find in the in those systems. And and as a result, people don't really use them. They don't see the value there. And I believe that actuaries can change that, which would fundamentally change change people's lives. We look at challenges like climate change. Climate risks need to be translated into financial terms, and actuaries are the people who can do that. They're the key translator for measuring financial risks driven by climate change. And then when it comes to actually taking action to address risks, having appropriate modeling of risk can help communities build financial resilience. And that's going to allow families, companies, governments to invest more because they know they have the knowledge that their critical assets are actually protected. So ultimately, you know, I, I see that actuaries will play such an important role, stripping away uncertainty and risk. And on a macro level, uh, the insurance sector growth can actually contribute to and influence overall economic growth of a country. So, so, so in my view is very simple. Actuaries are essential for economic growth of developing countries. So can, when you look at, um, let's say, your sector and many of the actors within it, um, you have just described the realm of possibilities also, well, and could say the sky is the limit. So in terms of the actual genesis of Miniman's engagement, what lessons does this hold for others to perhaps also join? Because the demand and the need, as I can sense it right now, is going to grow exponentially. And um, not least because of the enormous and increasingly systemic threats that climate change pose um, at a level that really individuals cannot cope with in many societies. And in our global community of nations, increasingly, many developing countries cannot cope either. UNDP you know, organized for the UN in January a pledging conference to help Pakistan recover from these cataclysmic flood uh, event of uh, last year, uh, a level of destruction that, uh, you know, was almost unimaginable in the country. Um, we very often come after a disaster and then scramble to try and help people to, first of all, just um, survive that disaster. But then in the whole recovery, reconstruction, inordinate amounts of money uh, are needed and spent and often in developing countries not available. So again, speaking to a world of actuaries, what would be, in a sense, a vision that you could see emerge around, let's say, some of these problems that we have described, which we, I think, both firmly believe we can actually help countries to solve much more effectively by working together? Yeah. So, so my vision is very clear. We need public-private partnerships. Actuaries will drive innovative public-private partnerships that are going to support all of the 17 sustainable development goals of the United Nations. And so, and so let's think what, what that would look like. Actuaries will design risk transfer and investment solutions that use private capital to achieve development objectives. So that could include disaster risk finance solutions, risk management systems that counteract gender-based violence, and risk management systems that promote the development of infrastructure, which is essential to meet fundamental human needs. Large institutional investors, such as insurers, use their investment portfolios both to earn a return and to tackle development problems. Actuaries have an important role to play in designing investment systems and evaluating the risk return trade-off underlying major investment decisions. So that affects how capital is deployed in areas such as sustainable energy and infrastructure investment. So, so next piece that actuaries will, will work on here is, is data and risk management, which go which go hand in hand. Actuaries uh, play a major role in designing and building platforms for management and analysis of data. And without this, we can't have the risk management that we need. So I, I think the, the best example, of course, of a public-private partnership is the global actuarial initiative itself. Uh, the UNDP and Milliman work together 
to build the actuarial profession in the developing world. And it's I've been delighted to see that get off the ground. And now it's time to take it even further. And so in, the, in this session, uh, you know, speaking to the International Congress of Actuaries, uh, I'm inviting everyone who's listening uh, to consider joining the Global Actuarial Initiative. You know, it's, a, it's just a wonderful opportunity uh, to make a difference in the world and to, you know, really help to improve the lives of people, families, you know, communities uh, throughout the developing world. And so we'll, and we'll, we'll talk more, more specifically about what, what you might do uh, at the end of the session. But another way that I want to highlight that actuaries in the development sector can work together is simply by raising awareness of the value of actuaries. In many developing countries, actuarial work is just seen as a compliance exercise. As you all know, actuaries have so much more to offer. We have an in-depth understanding of risk, and we are true innovators, developing creative systems to manage risks to improve people's lives. Many development challenges are, are missing critical assessment of risk and its financial impact. Actuaries can provide a risk assessment for each major development initiative. Then the final point that I want to make in terms of how actuaries in the development sector can work together focuses on the word development itself. Development implies a gradual process over time to achieve a stronger and stronger condition. A society doesn't go from developing to developed instantly. As a society develops, how people meet fundamental human needs will change over and over again. It will go through a distinct series of steps. And at each step along this journey, the risk position of people, families, and organizations will completely change. At each step, this risk position needs to be reanalyzed. The risk management actions will need to be updated and redesigned. Actuaries will walk on this journey of development with, with, with developing countries all through the world to help them achieve success. So with that, let me, uh, let me turn the questions back, back, to, back to you, Occam. You know, for the for those attending, you know, from from your perspective, what's an action that they could take, or a question they can ask this week to start realizing this vision, to start becoming a part of this process? I'll start if you allow me with a slightly cheeky response, which would probably to contact your director of human resources and um, explore the value, because this is how you first uh, and I sat down, and you said, you know, I employ two thousand or more people, if I remember correctly who every day do some extraordinary work, the motivational factor, the uh, expansion of the scope of their impact um, is also a tremendous attraction to many staff who work in the actuarial field. And I think our partnership in part became an opportunity also to look at the extraordinary, let's say, amplification and multiplier effect that that talent could bring to um, a world that is so often underserved. Our role is to work on behalf of the United Nations in the development sphere to ensure that no one is left behind. And I can give you a couple of very practical examples. You just mentioned energy infrastructure. First of all, a continent like Africa is an extraordinary place in which much of what happens next on climate change in the world at large will in part be determined by whether Africa can meet its energy needs, meet, in a sense, the investment into clean and affordable energy infrastructure. But the cost of financing that infrastructure is extraordinarily more expensive if you have to borrow capital. So assessing risk, looking at risk finance becomes fundamental to a market. And, you know, let's not forget, Africa will roughly have 2 billion people by 2050. It today has 1.3, 1.2 billion. And of those 600 million don't yet have access to electricity. A massive infrastructure expansion just on electricity generating capacity is going to be necessary. In the international climate finance arena for renewable energy infrastructure, only 2 to 3% of total expenditure currently reaches Africa. So here is a frontier where I would invite anybody who is interested in becoming part of a more global solution to these challenges to join us. Um, there are sometimes very specific projects, and I just want to speak from personal experience in the last few months. Some of you may be aware of an oil tanker, a 47-year-old oil tanker, being anchored off the coast of Yemen, caught up in the very long conflict that has been happening there. As of yesterday, we have begun a very unusual uh, salvage operation 
because that tanker has 1.14 million barrels of oil on it. One of my discoveries has been to work with the insurance sector and industry, including David Howden's insurance brokerage in London, to try and bring together a consortium that could underwrite what is a very unusual rescue operation and learning through that partnership um, quite how fundamental the ability for us as UNDP that are implementing on behalf of the United Nations this rescue operation is to then work with the insurance sector. And we spent weeks, uh, in a sense, creating the conditions under which an insurance sector could step up, without which we would not have been in a position to actually implement this. So these are just two very different kinds of examples where our ability to um, essentially manage risks, to contain risks, but also to underwrite risks becomes fundamental to our ability to either prevent a disaster from happening or to be able to help people to cope with disasters. And um, I think here, Ken, my invitation would be that in our insurance and risk finance facility, where you and I and our, our teams are working together, there are now 35 countries that are looking at this question of risk uh, pricing, risk finance, that are extremely keen to learn from those who have let's say the experience of working more mature markets and at the international level to share that expertise. So perhaps back to you, Ken, out of your practical experience in your sector, what would be the easiest way to become engaged? Because to some, it may still, still seem a very distant, uh, perhaps possibility or opportunity to become engaged. And I think it's actually not that complicated at all. Yeah. So, I, I see there are so many ways that actuaries can become engaged as, as part as part of this uh, effort. You know, for, first and foremost, as actuaries, we need to recognize the value of the actuarial profession. There's a certain stereotype associated with actuaries that we are highly risk averse. We prefer to stay in our comfort zones. We're satisfied with our nine to five jobs and being assigned well established roles and responsibilities. Uh, but actuaries can do and and do so much more beyond stereotypical roles in insurance and financial services. There's a, a clear need for actuaries within so many different sectors, ranging from getting access to and financing of healthcare, uh, to policy making, to disaster risk management. You just gave that wonderful example about the oil tanker anchored off the coast of, of Yemen. Uh, actuaries have the potential to add so much value through our unique ability to make sense of complex data and to derive risk management solutions. As actuaries, we need to raise awareness about our profession and be proud of who we are. In these countries that we've been to, there is a clear need to raise awareness about the value of actuarial work and how actuarial expertise is critical for functioning risk management systems to help people build better lives. Without effective risk management tools, there cannot be sustainable development. So let us help our actuarial communities out there to build the actuarial capacity in the countries that don't have it. So, so now it's it's my turn to pose a question to the audience, to all, all of you listening, uh, joining our session today. So what I'd ask you to do is, is just list two things, two areas where you think actuaries could expand inclusive insurance and improve risk management in the developing world. And then talk about your ideas with the senior leaders in your organization. And then please contact me if your organization would like to join the Global Actuarial Initiative. It's time uh, for the Global Actuarial Initiative to grow beyond uh, the foundational work of the UNDP and Milliman to include many more uh, organizations all around the world. So Akim, uh, we've got just one minute left. Do, are there any closing thoughts? Uh, that you'd like to add? I think your enthusiasm is infectious. All I would say, come and join us and help us de-risk the future. There are literally hundreds of millions of people who could benefit from that expertise, that skill, that institutional capacity that you can bring to what essentially has to be a collective effort in our world that is so interdependent. The United Nations at the end of the day is an un how can I say, unapologetic declaration of interdependence. And I think no more has the kind of risks that we now live under and that we have learned are part of our future demonstrated that. So to me, the Global Actuarial Initiative is an invitation. It's a platform. We have broken new ground together, but um, 
the scope for doing more exceeds our capacities by far. So hopefully some of you will feel encouraged, enthused, motivated. See you on the other side of this event, hopefully at least some of you. And Ken, again, thank you for the session today. Well, Akram, thank you very much for talking with the global actuarial community today. It is truly an honor to hear from you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right.